All right, Stevenson's Rockets. On September 15th, 1830, the age of the railroad began with the opening of the first line between Liverpool and Manchester. The locomotive that ruled those rails were, was George Stevenson's rocket with a blistering top speed of 45 kilometers per hour or 28 miles an hour. Rocket was the most advanced engine of the day and its arrival marked the beginning of the modern railway. In Stevenson's Rocket, players are going to take on the role of rail barons in 1830s England, hence 1830, by investing in the various new lines, transporting passengers, and building up local industries, players will vie for the honor of becoming the most prestigious rail baron of the early days of the steam locomotive. So what are you guys looking at? Well, over here on the right-hand side, we have a couple of examples set up up top, but we have the different railroads that are starting. We have the investment track for those railroads, which represent the number of shares that we have in those railroads. And then in the top left corner, we have city investments of the different types of industry that when these railroads actually connect to these industry will then pay dividends, i.e. get victory points. All right. We also have victory point track around the outside, around the outside, around the outside there. Um, and then obviously we have a couple stacks of basic track as well as advanced track like so there. There are exactly 60 pieces of basic track. The reason I point this out is because the game will end when the 60th piece of track has been laid of the basic track or when six of the seven companies are closed or have been merged or cannot be merged going there. Everybody has a player aid. Honestly, you guys don't need to see these other than it's really good graphic design by Ian. So well done there. So, okay, cool. You saw it. There you go. You won't see it again. Mm -hmm. Then everybody has a number of stations down here. These stations look like little tunnels like so there. And then everybody has player cubes, which are going to mark investments up there in the corner. Over on the left hand side, then we have passengers, which there are a finite amount of passengers as you can see there, and that's just going to be a majority scoring at the end of the game. And then the black cubes are going to signify that we have scored that city's industry or that city's city has met up with the rail, i.e. we've scored the industry. That's everything you guys are looking at. Every company has its own locomotive, obviously. And then in the version that we have from James, thanks James, actually has plastic locomotives, which actually work really, really well in person. However, for streaming, we think these probably show up a little bit better, so that's what we're using, all right? So, what are you doing in the game? How, how does the game play? Well, you have the victory point track. Obviously, the game is about prestige points or victory points. The game will take place, like I said, until six of the seven companies, uh, railroad companies, have either uh, been closed or can no longer merge or when 60 pieces of track have been laid. Then we're going to go into final scoring and go from there. But during the game, we're going to figure out who is the first player and we'll randomize that. They will get the first player token. And then from there, just going to be taking turns going around in clockwise order. On your turn, you have three options on your turn. The first is extend a rail line. So, okay, build track essentially. The second option is to invest in industry. What that, does that mean? Place a cube over there in the industry. Easy enough. The third thing is to take one of our stations and build it out here on the board, hopefully connecting to it to a rail line. Those are your three options. Obviously, there's a number of details that go into that. On your turn, you must do two of those. You may do the same two actions as well. However, if you choose to extend a rail line, you must do it on, if you choose to do it twice, you must do it to two different rail lines. So in other words, you could not extend the SER twice in a single turn. I could do it once, Jess could do it once, Chris could do it once, Andrew could do it once, but you cannot do it twice on the same turn. You could do the SER and as well as the LSWR, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. That mm -hmm. makes sense. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's go into detail on the three actions that you can do. 
The main action in this game, as you might could imagine, is extending a rail line. Extending a rail line actually has four steps. So it sounds complicated, but mechanically it's pretty simple. The first thing you're going to do is move a locomotive. So the first time that you move a locomotive, looking at this blue one, which is the GER, the Great Eastern Railway, you have a choice to go in one of six directions. Why? Because it's a hex. It can go in any of those six directions. However, once a train has started in a direction, so for instance, if I say on my turn, I'm going to move the GER in that direction, going forward, it now has a maximum of three options on its turn. It can go straight ahead, or it can bear to the right, or bear to the left. Well, you have gentle curves, and you have straight track, so that kind of makes sense, right? So it will come out from here and then either, you know, veer off one way or the other or go straight. Easy enough there. So you're going to move a locomotive. If it is the first time that a locomotive is moving, you're actually not going to build track. You're just going to place it there because a locomotive may never be placed, it can never be moved onto a hex that contains a city, a town, a, uh, a new city, or a, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the right word, the starting, the location. starting, starting location, thank mm -hmm. you, which is also a city. So it can't go onto a starting location, it can not go onto a town, cannot go onto a city, nor can it go onto a track tile, meaning track tile, or where there's another locomotive. So it must go on to an empty, mostly empty hex. Okay. So the first time you move the locomotive, you're not actually going to lay track. The second time it gets moved, that track will then get laid like so. So let's say on a subsequent turn, it was already here. On my turn, I say for my turn, I'm going to extend this rail line. I'm going to move the locomotive in one of the three directions that I've chosen. Then I'm going to get one share of the GER. I'm pink, so we're going to move that right up to there like so. Okay. Although maybe I maybe say Andrew actually did it on his turn to move that first piece of track, so it'd be something along the lines like so. Then there may be a possible veto. So let's go ahead and talk about vetoes. Vetoes are nasty little buggers, all right? And what these are is they're basically extortion to be able to move the track in the direction that you want to build it. If somebody says they are going to extend a railway line, it is going to be ex extended no matter what regardless. So it's going to extend one track length. However, the direction that they chose, that's what's the veto. Okay, so starting with any players that or starting with any player that is invested in that company may call for a veto. So in this case, only me or Andrew here could do so. So maybe a better example would be, say, for this purple line, if I were extending that purple line. I say I'm going to move one of those directions. Let's say maybe I want to move it in this direction like so. So I would then immediately get one share of the LNY, and then if anybody wanted to veto that, they can do so. So it could be as such that Jess, maybe she had a station over here and she's like, you know what, I'm gonna call for a veto because I would like it to go in this direction instead. Well, at that point, I get last dibs on the bidding. A bidding round will now commence. Starting with the player to the left of the active player, so if I'm the one that's moving it here, even though if somebody else could have called for the veto, Jess will start the bidding. She must bid, a valid bid is one or higher, and what we're bidding is number of shares that you're willing to pay back to the bank to be able to change the direction of the, of the track or prevent the player from getting a passenger. I'll explain that more in a little bit. So in this case, Jess is obviously motivated to come on over and to put it over there. She says, you know what, I'm going to bid two shares to be able to do so. Chris says, I'm fine with that, no harm, no foul. Andrew says, you know, I'm gonna bid three shares and I'm going to leave it exactly where it is. 
<laughs> All right. Well, in that case, it comes back to me now. Now I have a decision to make. I can either pay, match the highest bid to put the train in the direction that I wanted it to go, or I don't, and the highest bid will pay theirs, and it goes in that direction. Okay. The reason this matters is if the locomotive would move into another player's station, which is what happened here, this being uh, Jess's station, if, I, if there was a veto called and I was the one who paid the highest bid, or if I, pay, if I was the one who won the bidding, I then would get one of the passenger tokens, which is going to be majority scoring at the end of the game worth possibly six points. However, if I am not the highest bidder, I do not get that passenger. Mm -hmm. So that's essentially why I'm going to be motivated to, do, to win the auction. Also, maybe I really wanted it to go over this way. But as it is, Andrew said he bid three and to put that there. And I say, you know what? I really want that passenger token. Fine. <laughs> so I will then go back one, two, three shares there and the locomotive will stay there. But now we need to place a tractile because it did move. Like so, there. And now I would get that passenger token and put it into my own personal supply, like so. Those are the four steps of laying track. Move a locomotive, a possible veto if it's called, place a tractile, and receive a passenger pawn if it goes into another player's station like so. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. If there were no station there, there could still be a veto, but maybe I care less about it, okay? We'll get into the scoring that would happen from that here in a little bit, but that's the basics of, lay, of extending a rail line. Any questions on that? No. Nope. All right, the second option is investing in industry. This is pretty easy. Who has ever turned it is, maybe for my second action, I say, you know what? We're coming over towards either Northampton or Cambridge. Let's go ahead and invest in Cambridge. So I put a cube, and then my choice is to put it either into the four different things, which are steel. I believe these are textiles. This is leather, leather. and then beer. Let's go so, beer. you know, let's go with beer. So I'll go ahead and invest there. Boom. That's simple. Why we want to do that? Well, I'll, I'll explain that more in a little bit, but that would be my two actions. The third option on a given turn is to build a station out here on the board. The prerequisites for building a station are it cannot go where it has to go on an empty hex, an empty hex being these hexes out here. Cannot go on a town, cannot go on a city, cannot go on an origination tile it cannot go where there's a locomotive nor can it go there th think of it as being a halo around a locomotive and a halo around all existing track tiles or i'm sorry all existing stations so in other words i can't do something like that because well there's a locomotive right next to it and a station i cannot place here because there's a locomotive i can place here because it's at least two away from everything, from the locomotive or another player station. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, cool, easy enough. So those are all your options on your turn. Extend a rail network, invest, or place a station. However, now they're scoring during the game. Anytime a locomotive will reach a new town or a new city, some sort of scoring is going to take place, as well as if rail lines would merge. So what happens in this case? Well, if it connects to a city, you'll notice that a city here like so. But let's go ahead and back this up a little bit for a better example. And let's say I had just moved the railroad or extended this rail line to place that rail tile right there. And by doing so, it now, for the first time, went right next to Nottingham. Okay, we'll go ahead and throw a couple out there, there, and there. Cool, easy enough. At that point, and this is where the handy-dandy little player aid comes in, if, it are, if a locomotive 
has reached a, uh, adjacent to a city tile, it's now connected to that city. We then score industry in that city. So we look at Nottingham and we see who has the most cubes there. Well, Chris and I are tied, but if it were just Chris, he would score two points for first place. I would score if, throw another cube up there. Yeah, there you go. There we go. In this case, Chris has two, I have one. He scores two points for first, I score one for second. If tied, add and divide, round it down. Easy enough. Mm -hmm. And we're going to place one of those black cubes to show that Nottingham's industry has now scored for the game. Easy enough. Okay, that's whenever you reach one of these darker cities. However, getting back to the example here, and let's go ahead and try and figure out how we had this. There we go, like so. And yeah, that's, that's a good example. Once you reach adjacent to a town, now we're going to score, and this one's a little bit more complex, but stick with me, it's not that bad. The player who has the most stations on a line when it connects is going to score one point for every town, every city, and every origination city that is on that line. So if you look at that line, you'll see that I have the most, I have two, Jess has one, and Chris has one. So I have the most, so we count up the number of cities and towns and origination cities. Andrew, go for it. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so in that case, I'm getting six points total. So I would peg six points then. Whoever is in second, so if, for instance, there was a second blue one here, uh, bad example, sorry. They would then get six, half of that is three, and then it's tied, so divide by the number of players, round down, so they get one point each. So blue and white would each get one point. That's the scoring for towns. Any questions on that? Nope. So pretty straightforward with that. Then there's the merging of two rail lines. So if on somebody's turn, somebody says, you know what? They're going to extend that gray line right there, and they want to move it straight ahead. Let's say there's no vetoes. It was already adjacent to a town, so we're not going to do any town scoring. However, now it is going to merge with the purple line. The gray line, which is the one that, institu or that uh, instigated the merger, is actually going to go away. So what does that mean? We're going to place one of these little red X's onto that rail line, and that gray locomotive is going to actually leave the game. So we're going to remove the locomotive, we're going to place a track tile there, and we're going to add a little Y onto that. So if we can there, here, and it's now merged. Easy enough, right? However, if there was a, the existing tile that was removed from that is now removed out of the game. It does not go into the supply. Why? Because one of the game, tri in game triggers is 60 tiles, so you don't reuse tiles in that case. Okay? Also, whenever a company, or I'm sorry, whenever a rail line merges, there's going to be a scoring of the train line that just disappeared. So in this case, there is, just like the whenever we hit a town, the same type of scoring is going to take place. So Brown has the most stations on that line. How many cities and towns in origination locations is it next to? Two. 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 So he's, uh, Brown is going to score two points. It would be half, of, half as much if there were a second place. Okay. But then we need to do something with the actual shares there. So in this case... In all cases, you invest in the new company that it merged into at a rate of two to one. So in other words, this railroad, Brown has two shares, which means he's going to get one share of purple there, okay? Then that will go away. However, I only have one share, so as it is, I will not go up. I just lose it, these will go away. I do not get any bonus shares and that's that. So you'll notice now the gray is gone. That's the second trigger for the end of the game when six of those go away. All right? Cool, all right? All right, see if that fixes it. 
Apparently something's up with our camera of late. All right, so that's merging, okay? The scoring does happen in order. Connect to a city, connect to a town, then merging in case multiple of those things happen on the same action, all right? Isolated rail lines is the last thing we need to talk about. If one of these train lines comes over here and just cannot, if it cannot be linked to any further starting towns, railway towns, or cities, and it cannot be merged with another rail line, the rail line is considered isolated. So if the blue line were to come over here and it's out here by itself and it's, it cannot meet any of these cities, then we're going to actually take one of these X's here and any investments will remain. No more shares will be issued for that company though because it can't do any of those things. Even if another company can merge into it, it can't do the merging. Last thing to talk about is final scoring. Final scoring is pretty simple. Passenger pawns, six, play, uh, six points for first, three points for second, divide and round down if tied. Then we're going to score industries in each industry talking about majorities now in each uh, column whoever has the most is six point were any cities that have not scored already that don't have a black cube we're going to wipe those off the board then and it sh actually shows it right there it'll be six and three first and second place for each of those then we're going to score each rail line that still exists based on number of stations, just like what we did previously whenever it met, whenever it ran into a town. First and second place, scoring on those, and then whoever is first and second in shares will then score those rail lines again, based on the number of cities, towns, and starting towns that are on that line. And that, folks, is Stevenson's Rocket. There you go. Any questions?